We're here today for the, really the kickoff for an exciting new program in our community called Healthy Central Florida. And it's about hopefully the start of a long-term project that will sort of elevate the importance of health in our community and make people more aware that every day they have a variety of choices to make and that there's always a healthy choice that's available to them. And they should at least stop and reflect about whether the choice they're gonna make is a healthy or not one, or, or not a healthy choice. So I think it's really the, the beginning of a long-term, really new way of thinking in our community. Healthy Central Florida is an initiative to make Winter Park, Maitland, and Eatonville the healthiest communities in the nation. We're starting with those three communities and ultimately we hope to expand, but we're gonna really work at getting the model right and moving the needle in those three communities. The first thing that we're doing is convening community teams, groups of folks who represent government, business, faith, education, healthcare, recreation, leaders in the community who will assess what the needs are in each community and they're gonna be different in Winter Park than Maitland than Eatonville. So those leaders will do an assessment supplemented by the research that we're doing with UCF to get a baseline of what, what's going on in the communities, how is the health of the residents, and then we'll, they'll decide on policy focused issues, things that have the chance to really stick and last and change behavior versus programs. Programs are great, but if the leadership changes or the funding changes, programs can go away. They, they're learning to, to execute what we call a change tool, and this is a CDC model that we're using that's Centers for Disease Control, and this model is being used in over 240 communities around the country, and it's showing real success in some of those communities. So they're gonna do this, this assessment, find out what the priorities, priorities are for their community, and then go out and start working on these priorities. And they'll meet on a monthly basis, but they're gonna be at the table. This isn't gonna be a quick fix. It's really a long haul commitment that we've got to work on health and well-being you know, for the foreseeable future. We're not gonna just knock it out in six months or a year and there we're done. It's really gonna be a long term commitment to stay at the table and keep making our communities safer and more walkable, more bikeable, more fruits and vegetables available in local stores and in schools, focusing on school nutrition. I was fortunate enough to be part of the original uh, Achieve initiative about 15 months ago. The Winter Park Health Foundation sponsored a group of Winter Park, um, I guess, community leaders to uh, attend a conference in Tampa. And we learned uh, a tool that allowed us to assess needs within the community and how we can affect policy change. And we've been implementing that throughout the last year to 15 months. And now we want to transfer that kind of knowledge and that tool um, to our sister communities, Eatonville, um, Maitland, and also even Bethlehem. In this process that um, the Center for D Disease Control has created, um, it's called a change tool, and you go through, it's a data-driven process and assessment, um, but it, you also adapt it to your own community. So there's some innovation there, and that's what's been exciting, that it's not um, real high level, you can have some creativity in it. Um, and different communities will come up with different um, recommendations. The four areas that we focused on in Winter Park were safe streets for pedestrians, um, smoke-free parks, um, a work well initiative where we're trying to improve the uh, uh, health and well-being of our workforce, workforce in Central Florida and specifically in Winter Park. It's not easy. Um, I mean that's, that's um, true from my YMCA days. I see people come and go. So health and fitness is not easy. Um, even this process of policy change is not immediate. We don't see change happening overnight, but you do see progress. Um, I would just reiterate that as you affect um, change within your community, that you really focus on policies rather than just programs. You know, some of the best policy changes that have affected more people are the Clean, um, clean Air, Indoor Clean Air Act. You know, that saved more lives by getting smoke out of our, uh, our public buildings and our workplaces than any kind of um, uh, smoking sensation program, uh, seatbelt laws. Um, so those are examples of high level policies, but we can do little things in our communities, whether it's your business, your church, your schools, uh, healthy um, lunch programs is a, is a policy change that certainly improved the health of our children. So trying to keep it at that level, and it doesn't come natural. We all want to do the fun things that we get instant gratification for, but we really want to try to focus on policy.
The ultimate goal is to improve the health and well-being of our residents, to make our nation or make our communities the healthiest in the nation, to reduce obesity and those chronic diseases that are related to obesity, diabetes, heart disease, hypertension. When you look across the spectrum of the top killers of our residents in Winter Park, Maitland and Eatonville and frankly across the nation, more than 70% are linked to uh, behaviorally based preventable illnesses, things associated with sedentary lifestyles and poor diets. Well, uh, again, it had to start with me. I know I was overweight, uh, I'm getting down now, but it had to start with me. And that's what I said. I said, you know, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna lead, I first have to do it myself. And so once we started, uh, now I was reluctant about the time when we would do it because of Florida, it's, it's hot. Uh, the seven o'clock and everybody bought into it. At, I mean, they're cheerful at seven o'clock. That means that they see some type of self-gratification. Uh, you're doing it for yourself. You're not doing it because I told you so. Uh, we've got testimonies where people have gone to their doctor to say, hey, what are you doing? And they share with them. So that's why we're doing it. Well, you know, in particularly with African-Americans with the high blood pressures, diabetes, uh, when we look at that whole thing, we say that we have to be proactive, we can't wait until things happen. I know uh, proud of me coming into office and once I got into office, signing a lot of funeral resolutions, I'm saying something has to be done because if it's dealing with the heart, uh, we've got to do something about it. So that sparked this whole health initiative that's saying, hey, maybe we should get, I know we have to get health to get these blood pressure checks, how people know about that, but it is a whole educational uh, piece. So that's what sparked it and then the, of course the buy-in. Um, and because people see people passing and, and, you know, they was more apt to participate. I'd just like to say that uh, the citizens of Eatonville, I'm just proud, proud of them that, that they would really buy into it. Because, you know, we have a lot of choices, a lot of food choices. So when we talk about a nutritionist coming in, um, I'm just proud that they're able to buy in on the whole initiative and uh, to keep going. Uh, one of the things that we, we want to do is to, um, target kids as well. The walking group, we have some seniors and some middle-aged people. But I think if we catch the, the younger generation at a young time in elementary school and make it exciting, so that's the next initiative to get the younger folks in. Uh, from elementary school engaged in the whole health initiative. We've got our community teams, the leadership teams from Winter Park, Maitland, and Eatonville, and we also invited a team from Bithlow today. We've got other community leaders and media and just folks that we've invited to, to be here and hear. Mark Fenton, who is a nationally recognized leader on policy change for making communities more walkable, bikeable, and focusing on policy change that will make communities healthier. So they are doing a training to learn how to do that in their own communities. There's a regional effort going on in the area here, and the Winter Park Health Foundation is really at the center of this, but with lots of other partners trying to work on creating a healthier environment. And to their credit, they know that it's not just about scolding people to eat a better diet and exercise more. They know that we've actually got to build our communities in a way that makes it easier for people to make healthy choices, that in fact those become the default, that you naturally choose to be a little more active and eat a better diet because it's, it's easier, it's safer, it's more convenient, it's actually more fun to do that than to do the unhealthy alternative. You know, a lot of Americans are talking about the obesity epidemic, you'll hear the medical community talk about that. And uh, indeed we have an epidemic of, of rising overweight and obesity in this country, but I, I urge people to recognize that at its root, that's really twin epidemics of physical inactivity and poor nutrition. And the reason I mention that is because we know those are both independent risk, factor, risk factors. So what that means is, if I can get somebody to be more physically active and to eat a better diet, even if their weight doesn't change dramatically, even if they don't shed 40, 50, 60 pounds, they will probably lose a modest amount and more importantly their risk profile could change pretty dramatically. They could still be at lower risk for cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes and, and um, you know, uh, high blood pressure. So we know that physical activity and good nutrition 
themselves benefit you. Being more physically active as little as 30 minutes a day can reduce your risk for essentially all the stuff that kills us prematurely now. So I want people to recognize um, that it's not just overweight we're talking about. Really, overweight is the tip of a big chronic disease iceberg, most of which is floating below the surface. It's the stuff you don't see. It's your blood cholesterol levels and your blood pressure. Um, th those are the kinds of things we should be really worried about. And the biggest thing we can do to solve them is tackle the three lifestyle disease, you know, causes, physical inactivity, poor nutrition, and of course, tobacco use. We know that all Americans should get at least 30 minutes of physical activity every day. Those are the standing recommendations from the Department of Health and Human Services. We know that kids actually should get more like an hour of activity a day. These are minimum recommendations. We know you benefit if you do more, but at least those minimums, a half an hour for adults and an hour for kids, will reduce your risk for chronic disease and an early death. That's the goal. Um, the problem is we know a lot of people live in places where it's not very easy for that to happen. Uh, there are no sidewalks in the neighborhood, traffic is speeding, roads are really, really wide, no destination are nearby enough. You know, we've done modern zoning where we've got housing subdivision, housing subdivision, housing subdivision, mall, housing subdivision, housing subdivision, office park. And then we've built our schools in these big consolidated parcels out on the edge of town because the land was cheap. So we thought we would save dollars on, the, on building the new school. The problem is we'll pay through the nose for the lifetime of that school to transport kids back and forth by car and by bus because they can't walk or bike to school anymore. So when we talk to people about getting there 30 minutes a day, what we've realized is we've actually got to build our communities so that it's reasonable to do that. And our goal is to get people to assess their community environments, really look at it with, with a critical eye. Is it easy for people? Everybody, I'm talking very young, very old, people with physical disabilities, somebody in a wheelchair, or somebody who's visually impaired or blind. How about somebody who's not very wealthy? You know, can all people take advantage of physical activity opportunities? And if not, what can we do to change that? And increasingly, we're recognizing that we've got to make policy changes. It's not just a matter of doing a nice walking program and giving people t-shirts and, and pedometers to measure their daily steps, that indeed we have to go much further. We've got to put in place policies that make sure we don't build a subdivision without a sidewalk in it. And we don't build big wide roads, we narrow them down so that traffic speeds are appropriate for neighborhoods. We build a network of bicycle lanes and multi-use pathways and trails that are not just out there for recreation, but actually connect destinations, that connect neighborhoods to schools, that connect senior housing to shopping, that only when we do all of that, build systems so that it's easy for people to be active, do we get that change at the population level.